So as dynamite was going off on TNT, what was blowing up on the USA Network? Let's find out together. This is NXT Graded. Belinda, if we're going to stay at full sale, they're going to have to sort out the tea bag issue. That's just disgusting. NXT on USA kicks off with main event o'clock as Matt Riddle challenges Adam Cole for the NXT Championship. You know they are not messing around with AEW down the road, are they? Kicking off with the, with the World Championship match in the first segment of the night. Good work, NXT. Immediately, Matt Riddle takes Adam Cole down, several judo throws, and he goes for a Fujiwara armbar. Now, this is crucial because Cole is working wounded. He's got an injury on his hand, and Riddle wants to take advantage of it. Cole knows this, manages to make the ropes, manages to avoid get that, getting that Fujiwara armbar properly locked in. They fall to the outside, and Cole just hoys Riddle into the steel steps, and that finally gives Adam Cole the break in this match that he's been looking for. The pace in this match does not slow down from a sprint. This is incredible. Matt Riddle has some of the most unique offense, I think, in all of NXT. Like it's some juice, he pulled out everything as well, some big judo throws, an incredible Everest German suplex he busted out at least twice, those barefoot kicks that just look devastating. And Adam Cole, to his credit, he's an incredible wrestler anyway, but he's a great foil for Matt Riddle. Like he manages to find ways of getting out of some of Riddle's big moves. I mean, the obvious thing that you do when you're facing Matt Riddle, a barefooted wrestler, stamp on his feet. Cole did that at least once. My favorite Adam Cole counter in this match. Matt Riddle goes for the bro to sleep, picks him up, hoys him into the air, and Cole in midair turns it into a backstabber. And it was, oh, mwah, picture perfect. Later into the match, Matt Riddle gets right back in, hits a floating bro, but Cole gets the feet up, hits a Panama sunrise. One, two, point nine, 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 nine. Riddle retaliates, manages to counter another Panama Sunrise, hits the bro to sleep, hits a floating bro, one, two, and point nine, 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 nine. And the crowd in full sail are just eating every second of this, of this entire match. Like they haven't sat down. It's been, it's been loud and powerful, energetic. This has just been the best way to start NXT. End of the match comes when Matt Riddle once again goes for that Fujiwara armbar. This is the move that Riddle was trying to lock in at the start of the match. Cole tries to fight out of it, but Riddle is relentless. Every time Cole manages to roll through, Riddle gets it straight back in there again. Uh, however, a lucky elbow shot to the back of Riddle's head is, is what costs Riddle the match. He eats a last shot and a one, two, three, and Adam Cole just about retains his NXT Championship. Easy, easy, A plus to start NXT on USA. This match was incredible, and what a way, what a message to send to, to people who are maybe channel hopping at this point. Stay with us, because this is the sort of thing you're gonna get. Adam Cole doesn't have much time to celebrate and the fans don't have much time to recover because Finn Balor's music hits and out comes former NXT champ Finn Balor, who gets on the mic and declares that he is now NXT. Balor is back on Wednesday nights and this is, this has been 25 minutes of television so far. We have had a blistering NXT Championship match and the return of Finn Balor. Like, if, oof, I'm sweating a bit. We've got like another hour and a bit to go. <laughs> Two hours and a bit to go. Oh, Lord. Up next is the Velveteen Dream Experience. We kind of thought this would be a chat show. I certainly thought it would be a chat show. Wasn't. It was Velveteen Dream, sat on a sofa, surrounded by ladies, bedecked in purple lights. You know this is going to be a bit of footage that they use uh, on a Chronicle documentary in about five years' time, because you know like one of, one of the ladies sat around that sofa is going to be like a future women's champion that headlines WrestleMania 30, 39 or something. And I'll go, that is where I made my debut, as one of Velveteen, Velveteen Dream's goyles. 
Dream looks great in this bit. He's bathed in this purple light. He's wearing uh, this wonderful like neon jumpsuit and he's calling out Roderick Strong and, uh, and saying that he wants to give Roderick a chance to bathe in his spotlight once again. This, this bit with Dream, like I loved the production. I loved the setup. I loved the arrangement. They were playing his music underneath this. And I, I don't know whether it's me, whether it might, it might just be a Tom thing, it might be. But I find that if you're talking and the music underneath you, or the music bed for uh, you radio geeks out there, myself included, um, if there's lyrics and words in the music bed, it's, it, it's a bit jarring. So obviously Velveteen Dream is challenging Roderick Strong while his music's going like, Velveteen Dream, D-I-A-A-M baby, and I can't, I can't focus. It seems quite a rambly promo. The premise being that Velveteen Dream is challenging Roderick Strong for the North American Championship. I'm giving this segment a B minus. I loved the production value of it. I loved the style. I loved Velveteen Dream's outfit. I loved everything about it. I just felt that Dream's promo was a bit rambly. But the fact that everything else was so good is why I'm bumping it up to a B minus. Like everything else around it was so good. Like I, I can't, I, I, I can't poo poo on this too much. We get the announcement that next week, Drew Gulak defends the WWE Cruiserweight Championship against Leo Rush. I'm so glad that Leo and the WWE got any little affairs in order because Leo Rush is amazing and he's such a great fit for the Cruiserweight division. Also, the Cruiserweight division is a great fit for NXT. I, I'm firmly starting to come round to that idea now and next week they'll have, they'll have a blistering match. The Joshi Judas Io Shirai is out next. She's facing Mia Yim in singles competition. And we haven't had a chance to properly talk about NXT from off of America, you and I, but I'm a big fan of Io Shirai's work. Ever since she became a heel, like every little thing she does, there's so many nuances to her menacingness. And, and I think that she's gonna be a big deal. I really do. I like both these guys, but it just, it didn't seem to click for me. Like, it felt quite clunky in places. There were some great moves in here though. Like Mia Yim busts out a great overhead suplex, a code blue, a Tope Suicida to the outside onto Io Shirai. Shirai, who just has excellence in every little bit that she does, uh, also busted out a 619 and a springboard drop kick as well. There were some good moves in here, but it just it didn't, it didn't seem to have the, the pace of a great match. Despite Mia's best efforts, this was Io Shirai's night, finishing off Mia with a moonsault for the one, two, three. I'm gonna give this a B. I, 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 and I'm being really polite this week, probably because it's my first week, and you know, as, as all new teachers do in the first week, they just want to try and get on with everybody. Um, and, al and also, like I say, there was some good stuff in here, and I'm a big fan of both of them, but I don't think it had the, what it needs to be a great match. There was some good stuff in here though. And, and hey, let's, let's let them go at it again. Let's try it again, down the road maybe. Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, our ringside at NXT. Think about this, right? Had this been TNA, then have already got over the barricade, attacked the Undisputed Era, and Kevin Nash would have claimed, I'm here to make all the money. The night is young, so uh, that wouldn't happen, would it? We get a video hyping the NXT return of Tegan Knox. She got injured at the last May Young Classic and she spent a good year rehabbing, rebuilding, restructuring and getting back into the ring. She returned on NXT UK just the other week, so she's good to go. And it looks like she's coming to the US because they're certainly hyping her as an NXT star. I'm, I'm cool with Tegan Knox being part of the mix in the NXT from off of America. He's loyal to the NXT soil. Not my words, the words of Mara Ronaldo, presumably talking about the Full Sail Gardener. And the words of Mara Ronaldo talking about Johnny Gargano, who's out to face Shane Thorne next. He's Johnny Takeover, he's Johnny Champion, he's Johnny NXT now. Aren't we lucky to have a guy on the roster called Johnny with a replaceable surname? I can't imagine anybody coming along that might challenge something as specific as that. Can you? 
Nah, nah, I can't either. Solid chain wrestling to start with that gives Gargano the upper hand. Shane Thorne gets frustrated and starts attacking. He really gives Gargano a good run for his money. A big corner cannonball and a massive sit-out powerbomb gets a very near fall for Shane Thorne. Thorne was about to finish off Gargano, it looked like, but then Gargano busted out the poison Frankensteiner and a super kick for one, two, three, big win for Gargano. It was always going to be a big win for Gargano, to be fair. This was sort of a, a match that was put in place to, to re-establish him as an NXT guy. I'm going to give this one a B plus. I thought this was a solid match between Gargano and Thorne. Shane Thorne, like, and, and I know we say this about a lot of people in NXT, but like Shane Thorne feels like he could be a thing. Like I'm a big fan of his work here. Like him and Gargano really click nicely. What an odd trifecta this is at ringside. Mark Henry, Stephanie McMahon and Alundra Blaze sat together watching NXT. This is a bit like, you know when you go to a wedding and they've got a table for kind of miscellaneous people. People who just kind of know the bride and groom but they've got nowhere else to go. This is like table 11 near the fire exit at a wedding. Sorry, but it is. So her husband got a big win tonight. Can Candice LeRae do the same? She is about to challenge Shayna Baszler for the NXT Women's Championship. Shayna is fierce here. I feel like Shayna needs to recover some lost ground because lately she's been uh, embroiled in a feud with Rhea Ripley and, and made to look quite weak in the process. So this felt like this should be a match to sort of put the, put the emphasis and the energy back into Shayna. And whoa, she was a beast. Uh, early on into this match, Shayna throws Candice LeRae into the steel steps. She then puts Candice LeRae's hand through the hole in the steel steps that's used to carry them, puts the hand in there, sort of, sort of like it's back there really, Takes a good running kick at the elbow. Oh gosh. And that was Candice LeRae for the night then, just constantly selling this, this arm. And Shayna Baszler just gently, not even gently, gruffly, aggressively picking it apart. Baszler is doubling down on that arm with snaps and twists and stretches. Candice manages to rally with a DDT on the apron and multiple, in fact, a trifecta of tope suicidas. Shortly after this, Baszler goes for a suplex off the top rope and Baszler comes off the top rope. She slips backwards. And I, I, I was a big fan of what happened here because it looked like that wasn't meant to happen. Like Shayna wasn't meant to slip off the rope. But Shayna hit the ground and lay there as if Candice had done something to attack her. The commentators covered this up really nicely. Baszler stumbled back to her feet, went back into the position she was in, and then hit a gut wrench suplex off the top rope. Wonderful work by Shayna and Candice here. Baszler went for her clutch, but Candice was able to fight out of it. In fact, the story of the, 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 the third act of this match was Candice kept finding a way to stop the clutch being locked in. Like she rolled out at one point. One point she rolled into a clutch of her own, but obviously it's not her wheelhouse. So Baszler was easily able to counter it. The third attempt, she tried to rise up on her two feet. Candice climbing to her feet with Baszler on her back. And we're thinking, whoa, she's actually gonna break it. And that, this, is, this is quite a thing, but it was just too much, too late in the match. Baszler hoists it in, pulls right back and forces Candice LeRae to tap out. Given this match an A, this was a great outing for both competitors. Shayna kind of played off the idea that Candice LeRae was sort of an easy win for her in the first stages of the match. And then once she realized that LeRae could give her a fight, just went into beast mode. And these two really work well together. It's an A from me. We get hype for next week as Kushida will go one-on-one. -on -one with WWE United Kingdom champion Volta. This is based on last week when Imperium turned up and just laid to waste everybody who stood in their way. Kushida tried to stand up to fight for the honor of NXT, got beaten down in the process, and we're now getting a match between Volta and Kushida. I'm buzzing. I think they'll have a belter. That big Brit energy continues as Danny Birch goes one-on-one -on -one with the bruiserweight Pete Dunne. This starts hot and heavy with some real fast-paced technical wizardry. Tech if you will, from Birch and Dunn. It becomes a strike fest really quickly. And Danny Birch hits a perfect pop-up powerbomb and a rope-assisted DDT for a two and a half count on Pete Dunn. Would have been the biggest win of his career if he got that. Fast-paced punches, big kicks, angry biting and clawing from these two. And it ends up with Pete Dunn bending back the fingers of Danny Birch and the agony leaving him wide open for the bitter end. One, two, three. 
three. Pete Dunne wins the match. Doesn't have the time to revel in the victory. The lights go out, spotlight on the ring, and there behind him is Damien Priest, who clobbers him in the back of the head and hits the crossroads. Can we call it the crossroads now? We need a new name for it, I do believe. There is a war on, don't you know? And Damien Priest does the thing where he shoots an arrow at the screen and his name appears in big burnt out letters. Cool. This whole segment for me gets an A. I'm giving it another A. I'm just doling out the A's today. Here we go. You get an A. You get an A. Everyone gets an A. Now, because Birch and Dunn's match wasn't long, but it was intense, and it had my entire attention the entire time. And then the Damien Priest bit at the end, I mean, I'm really excited for Pete Dunn versus Punishment Martinez. Let's do that. So the NXT Tag Team Championships are on the line, and it's main event o'clock. The Street Profits challenging the undisputed era. Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford are led to the ring by Wale, who is a massive fan of WWE and Cultaholic too. How you doing, buddy? Uh, this was cool. This felt like a very special entrance. They came out to the ring, uh, being wrapped to the ring by Wale, and there were red cups everywhere. It kind of felt like the Al Snow head thing back in 90s ECW. That's one hell of a reference, that is. Um, I'm, I'm not the first person to say this, okay? And uh, But we don't normally get a chance to talk about NXT. Montez Ford, right? He's going to be the guy, isn't he? Like, he is going to be the guy. Like undoubtedly there's a future at the top of the card for Montez Ford. He's ace. Very even early on to get going. Montez Ford's drop kick party, however, gets cut off by an elbow from Bobby Fish. And then we spend the next 11 minutes cheering on Montez Ford, who is trying to get the tag to Angelo Dawkins, but it's just being slowly, slowly worn down by Fish and O'Reilly. There's a couple of moments where we think this is it, he's going to get the tag, and Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly take Dawkins off the apron each time, and he just cannot reach it. He eventually gets the tag when he turns Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish into sort of a mini assault course. Sort of rolls under O'Reilly, rolls over Fish, reaches out, bang, makes the tag to Dawkins, and in comes the unit of the Street Profits, just taking out Fish and O'Reilly with those spinning splashes. Don't know how I feel about those spinning splashes. It's a bit like watching your dad's mate jumping into a swimming pool. He hits a spear on Bobby Fish, a beautiful capture suplex onto Kyle O'Reilly as well. Dawkins is just decimating everybody here. Dawkins' fire gets extinguished by Kyle O'Reilly, who drops his leg onto the bottom rope and then locks in a leg lock. Uh, we see a moment where Fish gets the tag from O'Reilly and Bobby Fish is gonna come off the top rope onto a prone Angelo Dawkins. As he comes off the top, Dawkins, with a last burst of energy, reaches out and tags Ford. So there's no water in the pool for Bobby Fish and Ford comes off the top rope with a perfect frog splash for a two and three quarter count. Mwah! Beautiful moment. Undisputed Era decides, you know what, that's enough. Let's, let's go to the pub, let's leave this. They try and take a powder, but they're cut off by Montez Ford just flying over the top rope perfect somersault sent on to the outside of the ring. Roderick Strong turns up naughty Roderick Strong uh, only to eat a spear by Angelo Dawkins on the apron much to the delight of the crowd. However, this takes Dawkins out of the match leaving Montez Ford wide open for the high-low combination. One, two, three and the Undisputed Era retain the NXT Tag Team titles. This match you guessed it it gets an A. This was great. This is probably the best Street Profits match I've ever seen. Uh, Dawkins was great in his role. I know Dawkins gets a lot of bad rap uh, for being like the, the weaker one of the two, but Dawkins does his stuff really well. Ford is a machine, an absolute beast. Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly are just effortless class in the ring as well. And I can't, you know, I think the Street Profits benefited from being in the ring with them. Adam Cole heads out to celebrate with his lads, but doesn't get any further than the top of the round when Tommaso Ciampa's music hits. There is a great moment as his music hits where you watch Adam Cole's face and, he's, and his whole head just drops. Because he's had Finn Balor coming at him earlier on in the night and it's almost like he goes, oh, what now? Out comes Tommaso Ciampa. He's back, baby. No crutches. 
walking on his own two feet, and all the while he walks out and walks around Adam Cole, he is staring directly at Goldie. The belt he never lost. The, the, the most important being in his life that is currently in the hands of Adam Cole. Stares a hole right through the belt. Cole lifts the belt, holds it to his chest, which therefore brings Champa's gaze up and he meets Adam Cole. And that is how NXT goes off the air. As Mara Ronaldo shouts that Adam Cole is under siege. I haven't said it enough tonight, but big love to, to Mara Ronaldo, Nigel McGuinness and Beth Phoenix, who pulled a blinder on commentary. I just... People who get onto Mara Ronaldo for being a bit pop culture-y, let it go. It's brilliant. I just, how can you be angry with somebody that passionate? Just wanted to put that out before we go any further. But that is how we go off the air. Cole and Champa looks like it's gonna be a thing. NXT on USA gets an A. Competition brings out the absolute best in everyone. And with Dynamite up the road, they put on a belter of a show. The question truly is, can they keep this kind of momentum up? Because this felt like a takeover happening on a regular TV show. Is this gonna be every week now? Hey, why don't we get together this time next week and find out. Love you, bye. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. You can follow us on Twitter at Cultaholic. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cultaholic. If you enjoy what we do here at Cultaholic, you can pledge to us on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. And most importantly, don't forget to hit subscribe and join us.